Do you spend lots of time creating an NPC to have your players just not f***ing care? I mean, are you just tired of spending like hours or whatever developing NPCs' personalities and traits and flaws and all this kind of stuff and your players just like give the NPC the middle finger? And then you just feel like strangling someone when your players love, absolutely love, a random nameless NPC that you just made up on the spot, threw into the game at the last minute. Me too. Hey, what's going on? Lucar here. Today, I wanna to talk about NPCs. And specifically, I wanna talk about why they suck. Oh, and if you're new to my channel, then I create weekly D&D videos with information and resources for Dungeon Masters. So if that sort of thing interests you, go ahead and click that red subscribe button down below. Anyway, why NPCs suck. Now, what I wanna do is tell you a story from my friend Matt's game about an NPC, Grandpa Chops. Now, for this particular story, I'm actually a player in the game, and all of our characters need to travel across a continent to get to some port city somewhere. And we had this big massive statue of some deity that we were trying to take somewhere in the hope that we would get paid for it. And we didn't really know if we would or not, but anyway, that's what we were trying to do. So in order to transport this big massive statue across this area of the continent, which happened to be like badlands and mostly desolation, we hired a caravan driver to, you know, get a wagon and all that kind of stuff and take it for us. Now my friend Matt described this caravan driver as this older man with these big, massive mutton chop sideburns. And he had under his seat this old, like, flintlock blunderbuss thing that he promised us would help keep us safe from all of the bandits. Oh, and by the way, it was named Old Bessie. Now I laughed at this and I didn't think a whole lot about it, except that I, I kind of felt that I was beginning to warm up to this caravan driver. But here's where the magic really started to happen because my friend began to talk in the caravan driver's voice. And it was this sort of Southern voice with this like twang and drawl to it, kind of delivered in an old man, like feeblish type voice. At any rate, it was masterfully done in my opinion. And I immediately fell in love with this NPC caravan driver, like not literally in love. So I turned to Matt and I said, okay, what's his name? And my friend kind of looked down and fumbled for a minute. And as a dungeon master, I knew what that meant. He hadn't named this NPC. So I stopped him before he could say anything. Hold on a second. Can we call him Grandpa Chops? And my friend said, yes, yes you can. And thus was born Grandpa Chops. Now, during the course of the game session, my character, an insane dwarf by all measures, went to great lengths to keep Grandpa Chops alive. Now this in and of itself is a little bit extraordinary because most of the time when there is an NPC along for the ride, players don't give a care if the NPC dies, especially if the NPC isn't really offering anything of intrinsic value. But I was having a lot of fun with Grandpa Chops and I wasn't about to let him die. And then at the end of the game session, when it was time for Grandpa Chops to part ways with us, I begged him to stay on with the group. I even offered him a cut of all of our loot. And my friend Matt graciously agreed to have Grandpa Chops stay on with us. And that, my friends, is how an awesome NPC is born. Grandpa Chops was unique, memorable, and completely unplanned. All right, here's the deal. I had originally titled this video, or I was going to title it, How to Make Awesome NPCs. But I have a problem with that. Because the thing is, I can give you all of the right advice and all of the steps and tips that you should do when you design an NPC. I can tell you to create a personality for the NPC. Give her traits, give her flaws, practice the voice you want her to use. Think about her background, determine what her motivations are. Maybe she has a secret agenda. See, I can tell you all of that stuff and it is good advice. At least, I think it is. However, even if you do all of that work and come up with an extremely well fleshed out NPC, there is zero guarantee that it is going to be a success at your table. The crap thing is that some NPCs simply fall flat and there seems to be nothing you can do about it. And I mean, I think this is why I feel that NPCs suck. Not that NPCs suck in their just being NPCs per se, but they suck in that you could spend a lot of time and effort developing an NPC and your players may or may not give two craps about that NPC. And there are other times that you don't even spend any time creating an NPC. It's a throwaway NPC. You just toss it in the game and your players instantly love him for 
inexplicable reasons. All right, now here's the thing. Each month, my patrons over on Patreon get to help choose a video that I'm going to do. And for this month, they the topic they chose was how to make great NPCs. And the thing is, I, I'm pretty sure they expect me to come up with some awesome video about how to make sweet NPCs that your players are guaranteed to love. But instead, what I'm really saying is that you can do everything that's right to create an NPC, do all of the right things, all of the right checkboxes, spend lots of time on it, and it might still bomb at your table. By the way, if you're interested in becoming a patron and supporting the channel and getting some pretty cool perks out of it, I will put a link down in the description to it. All right, now I want to tell you the story about another NPC, Gary the Intern, who has become an awesome player favorite at the game I run at work. My players were on a quest to track down a wizard, and they arrived outside her tower and found no one there. Now, in order to clue them in on what happened to the wizard, I had a random band of kobolds attack them while they were resting at night. My plan in doing so was twofold. The first idea was that if they killed all of the kobolds, they might come to the conclusion that maybe these kobolds had something to do with the wizard disappearing, and we can track them back to their lair, and then maybe that will lead us to the wizard. Or, number two, they would capture one of the kobolds alive and interrogate him. My players did the latter. Now, this particular kobold didn't want to get squished, and so he gave the players the information that they were looking for. Because, as a matter of fact, the kobolds were responsible for the wizard disappearing. Now, I have this thing that whenever I roleplay kobolds, I always give them this, like, high-pitched, whiny voice. I have them talk like this, and kobolds aren't very intelligent, so it's really easy to convince them to do things. And for whatever reason that I suspect was probably the voice that I gave the kobold, my players instantly loved this guy and wanted to bring him on as an intern. I mean, they even promised him health benefits, a 401k, vacation time, I mean, the whole nine yards. And the kobold didn't even really understand what most of those things were, but he agreed. Enter Gary the Intern. Now, since joining their group, Gary the Intern has acted heroically time and time again on behalf of the players. For instance, there was the incident with the Wizard's Tower. At the request of one of the players, Poku, Gary the Intern climbed about halfway up the Wizard's Tower before its magical defenses were activated and a field of electrical energy began to course up the wizard's tower, and Gary the intern had to jump off from the tower, like about 50 feet or so, into the arms of Poku. And they never did get into that wizard's tower either. And then the players took Gary the intern with them to go defeat the kobolds that had captured the wizard. And Gary, in fact, played a pivotal role in helping them do so, negating some of the defenses that were in place, leading them through the compound, and in the end, guiding them directly to where the wizard was being held captive. You see, my friend John, playing Poku, had promised Gary the intern that if he worked hard and diligently and applied himself, then one day he would become Gary the full-time employee. And after helping the characters rescue the wizard, my players did give Gary the promotion he deserved. And so now we have Gary the FTE. And I'm gonna guess that one of the reasons my players liked Gary the Intern, Gary the FTE, is because of the voice that I randomly gave him, and probably because of the silliness of Gary and how he actually helped them do certain things. But you know, even before Gary did a darn thing to help him, they all really loved him. It was in many ways, kind of inexplicable. All right, this is what I want you to do. Down in the comments, tell me the story of an NPC that you put in one of your games, and an NPC that became an instant hit, and let me know why you think he might have been such a success. All right, so what is my real advice about creating NPCs, besides whining and telling stories about random NPCs? I think what I'm saying is don't give up. Keep trying to create NPCs that will be unique and memorable, but don't get frustrated when that NPC strikes out. Because eventually, you're going to hit a home run. Eventually, an NPC is going to be a success. It might not be that NPC you spent tons of time creating. It might very well be that NPC that you made up on the spot and just threw into the game because you, you needed an NPC. But the time will come that you place an NPC into your game and your players will love him. And here's the secret. When that happens, when you have an NPC in your game that your players take a liking to, you gotta hold on to that NPC and don't let him go. You gotta make the most of that NPC. He is your rock star. 
let him sing. By the way, I do have a little bit older video that I made about role-playing NPCs. It's one of these two videos right here if you want to check that out. And until next time, let's play D&D. &D.